this is uh, Wood Fox 1971 back. Uh, got by the, uh, got past the uh, mar holiday market. Uh, didn't do very well, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't sell all my big bird houses, but I uh, actually got orders for others uh, for different styles. So, um, yeah, so it all turned out. Believe it or not, I had orders for um, for walking sticks, which that's something I just got into a few years ago, but I haven't really uh, practiced it lately because I've been busy birding, building build, uh, birdhouses. So, anyways, uh, I kind of started by just carving faces, which in response to uh, uh, wood spirits, they're called tree spirits, I mean. But anyways, I'm gonna. I have a two to do, and I'm gonna show you my process where I uh, de uh, take off the bark and get it kind of prepped and ready for any uh, stencil transfers or carvings or burnings. To get it set up and ready to go for that. So uh, enjoy. Yeah, enjoy my video. So I just basically uh, it's dried out. Now that's something that's very important too. That when you do want to build a walking stick and you have a stick. You, you gotta let the wood dry out, otherwise it'll crack on you. Uh, but right now, this this is fully dry. This is probably about uh, I don't know. This I, I picked these uh, tree limbs up uh, from just the ground, uh, anywhere local, uh, about a year and a half ago. So it's it's been drying out for over a year. Um, and I can pretty much just start it with my chisel, or you can use a planer, and you just get part of the bark, and you can it'll actually start coming right off. And now uh, some somebody asked me, well, can't you just uh, get around the bark itself? Like, can I carve? Uh, with it still on there and use it as a design, yeah, but you're gonna have to put, add some glue because once it dries out, the bark will come off on its own. So, uh, yeah. I'm using clamps just to clamp it down for right now. Uh, keep it stable while uh, debarking it. I save the bark shavings for other stuff, for other projects. You know, when it starts building up, obviously, I start throwing it out. Or actually, I save it and put it, I save it put it on the side because it's great kindling for uh, when one make fires. Another trick that I use sometimes, if there's a little bit left over, I can't get it off, so fine. It'll either, let see if you can see that. You know, that this, this darkness that's what's left over, it's kind of like a stain, but it's, it's a light piece of it. You can just take a, a, a wire brush and go over it real gently. It makes it easier also to get around the knots. Um, I've, I've shaved the knots a little bit. Um, a planer. You know, you can take an axe and uh, when they have branches and stuff on it, you can just knock, uh, knock off the, the big pieces. It's approximately about uh, five feet uh, in height and diameter. I mean, uh, it is uh, length wise. Uh, I've, I've uh, cut a tip of it so when you're walking, the, it actually gives you a little grip on the ground. Um, yeah, so, anyways, you just kind of grab it into where you can. Get it in the position where you think you're going to be walking with it. Uh, usually, I usually put it just a little below shoulder height is where I uh, actually put the, the grip where you're going to be walking. But uh, initially, it's uh, it's pretty much whatever the other person wants. I'm making this not for me. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark it where I want my handle, my grip, and then I'll make some carvings of some... Um, some texture in it so it gives it a little more grip that's part of the it just uh, uh, complements the wood 